everyone, this is Madonna from the Doll Fairy Creations. Uh, today I'm going to show you one, how to make a soft weight purchase a couple of big clips from, uh, from the Dollar Tree. I also like to use these, which are also from the Dollar Tree. I usually do those at the start and the beginning, and of course everybody knows what these are. But anyway, I hope you hang with me, and I'll show you how to make it and what I do with it. Thanks. Bye. Oh, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Bye-bye. Let's make a soft weight. Now, the soft weights can be used for the Addy, for the Centra, whatever plastic machine. I also use them in my antique circular sock machine. So, how am I making soft weights? Now, you can do it a couple ways. Honestly, going to your local Dollar Tree or using cat litter or anything that you like. I don't use cat litter because of the fact that it sometimes is a little powdery and it kind of shows through aquarium gravel, gravel in your yard, whatever. But in this case, I have been to my secondhand store and some re somebody had... Uh, Thrown these out there to get rid of. I'm a big secondhand store type person. Um, and so I grabbed those, which is probably about like two of the things that you would get at the Dollar Tree or some other store. Or I'm not sure how much they are at Walmart. So this is two cups of the little round balls. Uh, what I've done is I've taken an old sock. Yes, it is an old sock. It is washed. It's not bleached. You might want to get a new one if you want. Two cups is approximately two, about approximately a pound. It might not be. All right, see how hard that was? I just took my thing. Now, you don't have to use, you can use whatever you want to to get it in. Okay, one cup. All right, one cup. I take it. Okay, I can either sew it or tie it. Since I'm being, you know... Let's do this fast and get it done so we can actually make a soft weight. And there is my soft weight, okay? Get your scissors out, cut it off. Again, if you don't have any lost socks that needs to be used some way, then good thing for you. Just cut that off short, and now you have a one-pound soft weight to be able to use in your Addy, your Centra, your print, whatever kind of, uh, that kind of machine you have. Or if you have, like me, you have a circular sock machine, it can be used in your circular sock machine. All right, so here is another great tip for you with your Addies. Before I even begin to show some of the other things I do with my Addy, is I want to show you my stand that I have my Addy on. I met, I am a, which I've said it a dozen times probably already in the video, but I'm a second-hand store, thrift store, junk store, whatever you want to call it, addict. I like to go to them. I walk around. I'm always finding things. So I was having trouble with how I like to do my knitting on the attic. So I found a wooden TV tray. And you can see it's a wooden TV tray. Sorry if everything's not as clean as I'd like for it to be. This, I actually came to my office to video this because my craft room looks horrible. Um, and my husband turned around, or you could do it. I mean, drilling a hole and using some, um, you know, a, a jigsaw to actually cut it out. He cut me a hole in this, um, in this, um, wooden table all right the hole is basically 10 inches around so you know if you're wondering what you can use get you a 10 inch lid from you know one of your uh thing at one of your uh, pots put it down cut it it attached great my husband we put the things on the inside now i have a real big craft room uh, i yeah it's about 20 by 20 and right now it's a 20 by 20 mess but, uh, because I've been doing shows and getting ready for Christmas, and, well, it doesn't matter if I'm getting ready for Christmas, Easter, whatever. I'm always in there working. So, anyway, um, so what he did was he cut the 10-inch hole in it. Now, I felt like it was a little bit, un it, it's stable, it's stable. 
but I wanted it, since I can have an area that I just set my machines in, I wanted it more. So what he did is down here at the bottom, right in here, he went in and had this part here, and he just he just put a hole, he just put a screw in that, so this can't move. But, if you don't, if you're not like me and you don't have areas that you can just leave your stuff up, my suggestion would be to just leave it like that. And then when you get through with it, put your addy up, fold that up, slide it under your bed, sit it in your closet, whatever. That way you have a table set up. And I'm going to show you why I do that in a minute. Okay. This is the other if. Okay. Sorry, but my counter on my small one went out and I just got a one of the actual you can tell she's been used in fact I bought her used and this was already broken I did buy another one to go on it but just have never never changed it out and she's nice and quiet so I don't worry about it this is the other thing that my husband did is I he we have a wooden stool uh now of course now this can't be fold it up and put away now you you know especially since I have everything attached to it for this because of the magnetic um, counter that I put on it but what he did is he cut a square in the bottom of this stool and the stool is perfect height let me see if I can get my ruler over here again and measure that the other one the circle was 10 inches this one it looks like it is let's see he cut it approximately seven inches you can't read it with this one seven inches by and it looks like oh what he did was he made sure that this um you know that the marks were not where he, he could do it um looks like seven inches by almost four it may not be quite four i want to say three and three fourths because you want it to your legs to be able to and that and to sit on it so that made it perfect for me. He cut the hole in it, so I don't have to worry about everything. This one, again, is a little bit more if you want to put your stuff up and, you know, uh, and not have it sitting out. This one would be a little bit more inconvenient, but is very sturdy. You can crank on it. I have my hole in it, which I'm going to show you how I use in a few minutes, and it's perfect. So, now, let's get in there and I want to show you why I have everything like I do. All right, now for my third tip on why am I using all this stuff and why do I have the holes. The other thing I do is I get a salad spinner. I set it on the floor because it does spin around and even if I, right now I've got my yarn sitting in it, but if it, when my stuff gets long enough to hit on the floor, I will put this underneath my addy and let it fit in it and it will spin around as everything else spins around right now i'm showing you just that i have it my uh, thing all right i am knitting and i am telling you this is red heart yarn and it is not happy regardless so that is even the more important the reason why i'm going to show you why i have a hole in my table and why i use soft weights the other plus that I want to show you is, let me see if I can get it over here. It's a silicone spray, which helps tremendously. I spray my yarn with it. I spray, I do embroidery. I spray my embroidery spools with it. Um, my grandmother, who used to work in a shop, she swore by silicone, and I guess that's how I got started with it. Unfortunately, and, all I, do, and I do spray it on the outside of my yarn or the inside or whatever, uh, I'm just going to spray some right there on the top, and then I will um, continue. Being red heart, you know that the first few rows, at least to me, until I get to a certain point, it I have to actually pull it down. What I am aiming for, I'm on row 21, what I am aiming for... Um, and another thing that I didn't show when I started was I use these little clips for my start yarn, which really helps. What I'm trying to do is to get it to meet in the middle, okay? So if I pull like this, so let me give a few more. I'm going to try to hold it a little bit like that, see if that will help me just a little bit. But I want to get to probably row 25 will probably be enough. 
um, again, this I didn't even realize, but you know, I want you to see that, yes, even those that have been knitting on flatbeds, circular sock machines, addies, and everything else for, well, let's see, I started doing flatbeds probably 18 years ago. And, um, well, really, I had one in the 80s, but uh, I was raising children and didn't know how to do it. Okay, that's row 22. Let's see if it meets in the middle yet. Pretty close. I probably can get by with it. Let's see if we can gather it up and, and do it. All right, so I'm going to gather that up like so. I'm going to take my big white. Uh, it's probably not going to hold it. It's probably not far enough down yet, but let's see if it'll hold it some, then I can move it in a second. Okay. I'm going to take my soft weight then and put it in the center. All right. So now, see, that's even why I was pulling that it did it. Now, let's see. I'm beginning to believe you ought to do waist yarn for 30 rows and then start. Okay. That's 25. And let's see how she does. When I, I mean, 24. Let's see when I get to 25, I'll change it. And that's even with me pulling down. Again, this is a red heart yarn. I'm going to move that right there for a second. Try to see if I can get more of this. Okay. Now, most of us, when we're doing hats, scarves, or anything else, I mean, if you're just doing 13, 14 rows, that's on the little one, that's a little bit different. But we're doing a hat, and we're going to be doing, what, 120 110, 120, 130, depending on what you're wanting to do. Um, so I do that. All right. So I've already had to pull down all this time. And so now, again, that was done with me pulling down. And if I was doing, making a hat to actually sell, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I would um, probably take that, you know, undo it and take it out. Um, for a hat, but then again, I probably wouldn't use this yarn for a hat. This is like uh, for the inside, and if I did do the inside, I'd do the other first. But if you've got your bulky yarns, but I just want to show you how much easier it is for me to knit. Now, if you have one of the little electronic screwdrivers, which I do have, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, but you can see how much easier you just watching from the time of this right here where it messed up. So let's go to right there from that. Let's watch this and I'm going to just do this and I want you to see how it is pulling down on my stitches. And this is that red heart. I'm going to throw it in the trash yarn. Uh, again, I use this. Well, I did a rabbit yesterday, and I made the scarf out of this. And actually, I used the um, little prim uh, I-cord maker, and it actually accepted this yarn. Surprise, surprise. Um, but see, now, with it having the weight on it, I'm not having to worry about it. Um, and that's why I have my hole in my table. Because now, I mean, it's getting down. Okay, let's see, I'm on row 35. Okay, now you see how much I've knitted. The first 20-something I was doing, I was having to pull down and still got some. But now look at it. It is pulling down. If I was making a baby blanket and I had 200 rows, of course, I'd probably be using the smaller Addy. But this will fit in the smaller Addy, too. You can see how easily and how much better it does. Um, so, you see, I'm not having to pull down and worry. And it, it all goes to having a table with a hole in it and being able to use the soft weights on it. I've heard of people using the um, um, lids uh, and all, and people turn it up and do a donut in the center, and that's fine. If, they, if you can do that, um, let's try it and see. Okay, let's take this undone and do it like we're doing a donut. Okay, let's see. Do it like we're doing a donut. So I'm just saying maybe you don't have a place to be able to put a hole in your 
and something to be able to do. So I'm going to pull it up on this side. Let's pull it up on this side and see how it works like that. If you don't have something that you want to put a hole in it, doing it like that. Now set this on top of it. Okay, it's not touching my table. So I could do it for a while. I'm not sure if it's going to work as well. But you know, let's experiment. It's pulling down. You know, it's not really that much pressure. I mean, not like on my sock machine where, you, you know, you can thump it just about when you do it. Let's see if it does pretty good with that. I'm not doing bad. I still like my other way better. I'll go right back to it, but you can see how just having one pound or basically a pound, you could use more. I mean, my, the one, the other one that I have, I have a two pound weights also, but I use them a lot in the sock machine because this will get down in there. Now with the magnetic thing on the small one, I can't use BBs, which I, my other soft weights have BBs in them because it's magnetic and of course it stops the row counter from working. Okay, I'm on row 40 so far. I don't see any kind of messed up, messed up uh, stitches like I did before. All right, I'm going to put it back down like I had it. Sit over there for a minute. All right, let's go now that I've gotten this far. But you can see how easily it is. I'm going to work a little bit on this. I want to go get a thicker yarn, and let's see how it works with it. Okay? I don't mind cutting this. This is Red Hearts. I don't care one way or the other about cutting it. So let me go get some thicker yarn, and I'll come right back. All right, I came back to show you. I'm on row 60. I still haven't gotten a tuck stitch with it. I was just going to go ahead and and just do out this um, the skein real fast before I did anything else. So as I'm getting longer, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move that up. Um, I don't want to make you sick by turning it down there, but all I'm doing is twisting it. Let me show you over here on this side. I'm not sure if you can see it. Okay, all I'm doing is twisting it up there close to it and just hooking that over that just like that, okay? So let me get back to this where you can see me again. So I'm just getting a hold of this. I'm just kind of twisting it a little bit, and I'm just hooking that white one right around it. If you don't think, I mean, two, two come in a pack, but I just wanted to show you. I'm on row, well, it says 57, but I have not got one tuck stitch by doing it in this way. Okay, I mean, I and this, as you all know, if you've been doing Red Heart, this machine, well, my machine anyway, does not care for Red Heart at all. And, well, how does it do with a hand drill? Okay, here's one. My husband made me that. I'm very proud of it. So how does it do with one of the little drills? Okay. Still not having a problem. Do you see any tuck stitches? I don't. The only tuck stitches I saw was the very first one. Um, in circular sock machine world, we do what is known as a cast-on bonnet. I'm beginning to think I need to fix a cast-on bonnet for this thing. Let's got 30 and then just go from there. Cast on bonnet does every other stitch and you could just, you know, do around. All right, I'm going to finish this. I don't have much on it left. See, I've almost done the whole little skein. That I, well, the little part that I had left. I want to get all the way down a little bit more. And then I'm going to take this horrible yarn, which... I don't know. You see how thick it is? We're going to try that. Let's experiment. It either works or it doesn't work. Hey, but you know, maybe it'll work because I had a horrible time starting with this. And now I'll tell you now, if I ever, when I made the hat, what I ended up doing is turning around and starting with my solid and doing a small amount of the solid and then picking this one up. All right, I'll be back. All right, so basically... 116 stitches later. So let's move that forward a little bit. I'm going to actually put a clamp on it, even though I meant I just 
to keep it out of my way, basically. All right, you're going to ask me probably the big question is how often do I change this, uh, move my little clamp up? Uh, 25 was where I basically set it on. Maybe we did it at 23, but 25, 50, 75, 100, you know, 125, so, uh, you know, 150, you know, so forth. In other words, I do it in increments of 25. Um, as soon as we finish, try this one, we are going to go over there. I'm going to take it off and we will look at it and see what has happened. Now, this thing is almost touching my stuff in the bottom, which is great. All right, so I'm going to grab another one of my little clips, and I'm going to put it on this. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm going to unravel all this, so um, this is for experimentation. So let's, I'm going to, and one thing I found about these big old bulky yarns, you have to measure them. They're not, I'm big about measurements. If I'm making a hat, I want it to be so many inches long, which is usually around 24 uh, that way I can have a roll up brim. It might be a little bit longer. Um, and I noticed on these, it, this chunky yarn is, you know, it, it measures out differently. Um, so I can do it. All right, let's see. Okay, we've got our weight on. We've set this up again. I would probably, if I'm using this yarn for a hat, I would have started with a my thin yarn first my inner lining because I really you know unless you want to use this the whole way and if you do good luck you're going to be pulling down until you can get it and then I'm not sure if it'll do it okay so here's our chunky yarn let's see how it's going to knit I have not sprayed this with silicone it is pretty much well um, a piece that I had uh, had left over from making something Okay, that's row one. All right, I didn't see anything happening now. All right, row two. Let's see if it's going to actually roll or if it's going to do any kind of um, tucking. Okay, so far I don't see anything. Now that doesn't mean let's not hold our breaths or, you know, great, let's see. But if you've ever tried to do one of these yarns, which, if you're like me, I know you have on your machine. All right. Now, she's doing okay. She's not griping about it. She's not making any major noises to let me know that she does not like this yarn yet. Usually, this baby here, what she does is that she will just, if she doesn't like the yarn, and that's a thick yarn, and I can tell, all right, that's five rows right there. Okay. I'm not seeing anything that tells me that it did. Again, this is what's keeping it all pulled down. If I was doing this, I would be jerking by the hand and I would still probably get some. All right. So far, so good. When we get a little bit further, I'm going to get my hand, the the screwdriver out and see the battery powered screwdriver and see if she goes wild with that she's not having any problems i don't know if you can't you know usually if they have problems the machine will make a horrible sound and you can tell and as i as you can see this is not a thin yarn by any ways or means and I was wondering how well she was going to do with, I mean, the first time I tried to do it, I did it starting with that yarn. Mm, learned le Lesson learned real fast. No, start with a simple yarn, even if you have to like a thick waist yarn and put 20 rows on and then take it off later. Uh, if you want to do the whole hat uh, like this, I would definitely say do 25 rows of waist yarn and then start this. All right, shall we try? Maybe we all know, need to go get a drink of something before we do that. Nah, we can handle it. All right, so here's this. Let me turn it where I can hold my arm right with it. All right. Fourteen rows, do you see anything? Uh 
All right, 17 rows. I don't see any. Okay. Let's get up to 25 rows. And then I'll move my uh, weight up. Again, that is only... That I'm, I'm stopping now. It's, 20, it's, it's row 20, not that it makes any big difference. Um, I'm going to remove this using this. I don't have to have it anymore. Uh, but I love these things. I, I like using those. Um, it is already touching down here at the bottom. It's touching in my little... Uh, let me move you out of the way so I can get my right hand in there since I am totally 100% right-handed. All right, so let's grab that. Do you see anything? I don't. I see perfect knitting, which is what I want. If I don't hit something, knock it off by accident, it would be user area, meaning that I hit that by accident. Okay. No. All right. So I, I stopped it at 20. I could have probably kept going. But I do want to let you know that, again, this is going to measure out or have a larger or a bigger gauge than using the other yarn. So it's not going to take as many rows to do what you need to do to um, to get it done. All right, let's go back to this. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this off. And then I will come back. Y'all, I'm sorry, people. I do not see any bad stitches um, on this thick yarn. And um, she's knitting like a dream. She's not making any noises, any squeaks, any whatever else to let me know that she is not. I'm not saying it's easy, but she's not bulking with it. I mean, she's not having... And I don't see if you see a tuck stitch, but we'll look at it when we get through. Okay, kids, I'll be back. All right, moment of truth. Me doing it by my hand, trying to get it started. I want you to see that. Okay, I showed you that to y'all when we were knitting it, to everyone when I was knitting it. That was me pulling down by hand, trying to get this yarn to work. All right, then I put, then I put the, my weights on. I want you to look. See anything? I think I don't need this. Let's just move it out of the way. It's just being bothersome. Okay. Let's flip the blue over. Again, doing by hand. I did it by hand to right there. You can pretty much well tell, you know. Again, I think I need to do a setup bonnet. Which y'all probably don't understand, but I do. Look at the stitches now. They're very, very even. And I do not see any. All right, now let's look at the hard one. Now we started this off right off with the weight because remember we already had this going. I do not, do not see any. Do you? I don't, and I'm looking hard. Is that one? Nope, that's not one. Let's look at it around. I do not see any, any bad stitches. All right, so this is Madonna, a.k.a. the Doll Fairy, or the, signing off. Um... And I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and I uh, hope to see you again. Bye.